Tu podcast. W głowie się mieści. Okay, so uh, thank you Eckhart for being a part of my interview, my podcast and um, my today guest. He's a, a neurologist, the psychiatrist and also psychotherapist and he was a director of a psychometric department of clinic in Berlin and also the director of schema training center in Frankfurt. Yeah, it's that's yeah, that's right. Yes, and also he is an author of the a lot of great books about the schema therapy. Two of them they are published in Poland. It's the contextual schema therapy, an integrative approach to personality disorders, emotional dysregulation, and interpersonal functioning, um, and also breaking negative relationship uh, patterns. A schema therapy self help and support book. Also published in Poland by Gdańskie Wydawnictwo Psychologiczne. Yeah, and uh, I, I I check your site and I uh, I find out that you are an author of a lot of great books and I want to also meet them maybe in uh, English language too. And Actually, most of them are in German, but we started a few yeah. years ago. We started publishing in English because this is the access to much more people. Oh, yeah. And the translated books are most those who have been written in English, because a translation from German book to another language is kind of more difficult. But we'll see what happens in the next years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. And um, on the beginning, I would like to ask you, uh, because like you are a neurologist, psychiatrist and psychotherapist, so you are a very complex uh, specialist and Uh, on the beginning, what uh, what is your thera uh, therapeutic first approach that you learn, and what makes you that you turned into the, the the schema therapy and the cognitive behavioral therapy? Like a little bit uh, your background history. My history. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like for me the the the, the people that I meet, they like like the life. It's it's very very important and interesting part. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I love to be part of your podcast because I think this will contribute to spread the news about schema therapy and especially the more contextual approach, integrating acceptance and commitment therapy, other third wave therapeutic aspects into our work um, because you will reach a lot of people. So I welcome everybody who's listening to us and I'm very <laughs> glad that you invited me and it's Thank a pleasure you. for me. To oh, talk it's an honor, a pleasure for me. Yeah. So we have a win-win situation. This is <laughs> yes. always what we try to go for in our lives and in our therapies. So, okay, as answering your question, um, I'm when I started working, it's 35 years ago. So in those days, psychotherapy for medical doctors was a psychodynamic approach. Behavior therapy was something for psychologists. And in those days, the, the medis, medical apartments were dominated by medical trained people and psychologists were kind of co-workers. This has completely changed in the last decades. But my first training is a psychodynamic training. And this is why I somehow I'm inclined to integrate interpersonal transference, counter transference, relationship ideas on a deeper level into schema therapy, not only on your hands-on practical level, but yeah. also understanding deeper the interaction and the moves between the therapist and the clients. So this is uh, my starting point, but pretty early, about seven years later, I, I, I was the director of an addiction treatment center close to Frankfurt, and this was a behavior therapy clinic. So I had to do a second training with behavior therapy, but since I have both trainings, I from the start i tried to because i understood there's something good about psychodynamic and of course yeah. the more practical approach of cbt both has its pros but i tried to merge it a little bit so i was looking for approaches who were somehow connecting these both polar ideas how to work with people the the psychodynamic idea is more introspective they are more trying mm -hmm. to reveal the, the the motives the past history of the people to understand present moment presentations based on biographic experience 
CBT in its pure form is just about behavior, about functionality. Is it effective or not? So there is no history. If you do CBT in a very behavioral way, you don't make your mind up about the black box, which is the brain of the client. So yeah. these are two poles. And I always thought, wait, there's something about both poles of it. So I started to integrate it. And there are many more people who tried to do that. Yeah. So I was not alone. And finally, schema therapy is a perfect um, approach in a very simplified model. It's not so theoretical. Yeah. But it includes a biographical understanding. It helps clients to get a deeper idea why this happens, what happens now, because you can't understand the, the projection, the fear of a person um, in the present moment. For example, mm -hmm. if you take a traumatized person and they yeah. have been abused by a person with a mustache, a simple example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is part of the, the, the trauma uh, pattern in their brain. And we know from Edna Foa's work that there are complex networks yeah, that get activated. The fear, uh, the fear network, 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 trauma yeah. network. You can yeah. call it fear network or trauma network. And sing, sing, in uh, some smaller parts of this whole network might activate the whole whole pattern. And if you later meet a person with a mustache, mm -hmm. you, you might not it's my, you might not get a panic attack immediately, <laughs> but you get a certain priming with the negativity just yeah. based on the on the decent activation of your old networks and you have no idea why you are so critical about that person but your criticalness might impact their perception and they might think oh what's about adam he's so he's so distant but i'm not yeah. a bad person so what's wrong with him because yeah. there's nothing wrong with me so it must be something wrong with him and then you get into a very difficult interaction pattern. And if you have a negative or distant reaction on both sides, this might escalate and lead to a not understandable interaction problem in the present moment based on past experience, especially if the other person also have some um, patterns, maybe a rejection pattern by a critical parent. And then you have a very, very quick mode cycle we call it a mode cycle yeah and you get into a very very rapidly you might get into a maladaptive interaction especially this is our focus on couples work it yeah helps so a lot it was my idea now. Yeah. yeah but you can understand the the, the escalations between couples much yeah. better if you include kind of a background yeah so the dynamic of the couples yeah and that we all came in the relationships with our parts of uh, our, our history, our schemas. Yeah. Yeah. And the, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's not about the thoughts. It's deeper, you know, deeper, yeah. it's, it's just a feeling. And the problem is that feelings are always in the present moment. There is no, we don't have any organ to realize if a, if a feeling is old or new. If, if a feeling is there, it's there. And we automatically, attribute our feelings to the person we are together with now. So there is no sensory organ to understand if a schema activation from inside impacts your feelings, you will always be inclined to think Adam is the problem, not my father or my mother. And this is why you have to reveal these old patterns in imagery and not in talking. You can't access them in the narratives. You need to do imagery to move from the semantic memory where, where the language is to the images stored in the episodic memory. And this is why imagery is an essential part of schema therapy and accesses a, a, a completely additional and much more complex storage in our mind. And this helps us to understand why the mustache is the problem. There is no narrative about the mustache. Yeah. It's an image. You know, image, yeah. and this is why imagery is so helpful. So you were talking about uh, schema, yes, mm -hmm. and the schema activation. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, modes. So maybe because the podcast is not only for the specialists, <laughs> so maybe what is the difference between a schema? Uh, like we know that now we are having a 19 schemas. Yeah, like they add one. I heard maybe it's it's. Uh, not official, but but I heard that <laughs> yeah. you heard it through the grapevine. <clears throat> yeah, you made a good point because we were in our talk already there. The schemas is what is in, it's printed or I I implemented into our neural networks. And this is our brain. 
You know, your brain builds up over about 20 years when you grow up. Yeah. And all what happens in the early years is in the episodic memory of your brain. Mm -hmm. And this is a schema. A schema is a pattern, or if you put it more in an, an experiential way, it's like a little video clip. Oh. that mm -hmm. stores the interaction with you, your parents, your siblings later in school, and you have a certain inner world based on these video clips. And whenever something happens right now, these video clips get, get activated and your brain offers you an, a, a blueprint of an interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also distorts perceptions, of course, because they, the, your brain decides what it regards as more important, more relevant, and then you get it a more intensive perception of that part of the information. And by that, you disregard other parts. There is a selection based on schemas already in perception, like a glass you wear and you're mm -hmm. not aware of. Like sunglasses taint your thing. Oh, it's so dark outside. It's not dark. It's your glasses, you know? Yeah, yeah. And this perception is the first step. And it also includes a kind of an interpretation. A person with a mustache is dangerous. So this taints your feelings towards the situation, mm -hmm. which is your reaction already. And this, again, taints your ideas how to react. Maybe better avoid this mustache person. Mm -hmm. so, so the without, mustache is dangerous. Yeah, like yeah, yeah but this, this is not, 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 uh, not consciously. Not consciously. It's on an yeah. emotional level. Yeah. You yeah. can't explain it. You just feel it. And these are the schemas. So the schemas, they are located where in our brain? If yeah, you... somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in these yeah. representations of the world. Bowlby yeah. calls it the internal working model. We have an idea about the world consciously and even more subconsciously in this episodic memory. And the modes are the, the result of the schema activations and the way you learn to deal with the schemas. Mm -hmm. Because in general, there are two main paths with schemas. Yeah. If you are, for example, have been abused as a child with a mustache person, <laughs> you can surrender to this experience. You can make it a pattern through your life. Okay, I'm a victim. People abuse me and people with mustache are dominant anyway, so I don't have to fight at all. It doesn't I hope that our mustache uh, listeners, they don't hate us. Okay, they should not take it personally. <laughs> no, I could also say blonde people yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know? This, know, is, this is not, yeah, yeah, uh, we're joking. joking, just, we're joking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But joking helps a lot, you know, even in therapy. Mm -hmm. We work a lot with the standing up position as an observer stands and we look down on the chairs, the therapist chair, the client chair, and in the standing up position, you are more like an observer. You can make jokes about the therapist and say, okay, yeah, you're right. This is the <laughs> therapist. He's not listening to the client. This is not okay. Yeah. But it helps a lot to create space and flexibility in the brains because therapy doesn't need to be serious all the time. Yeah. It's serious if you dive into the patterns, if you do imagery, if you connect with the inner world of the client, it's serious. But when you get out to the observer stance, it's okay. You can play with those perspectives. There's, there's space for humor, for jokes, for, for self-critical remarks. And this yeah. creates, this clears the air in the standing up position. It's like a breeze of fresh air in therapy. Yeah. And this makes it very much more comfortable. So I feel that you also start like talk about getting a distance to our language exactly. in the act way. Yeah. yeah so it, yeah. this is the moment when when the act comes in. Yeah. Exactly. Because the activations you feel now are the modes and you can surrender. That's the point where I just started. You can surrender remaining the victim all your life because this is your belief, your way to deal with your schemas. Or you can start to compensate them and, and fight against them. And then the victim might become an offender because they want to have the long end of the stick in their hands. And the interesting part is when you see the mode, a, 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 a person who, who compensates a vulnerability schema will appear as a very tough, pushy person. Mm -hmm. The person who, who decides, in quotations, to surrender to the schema will still appear as the victim. They have the same schema. They have the same past experience. But the presentation in the mode today is completely different. This is why you can't connect a mode with the schemas. You need to do imagery to float back from the mode presentation, rewind the coping modes, surrender mm -hmm. or compensation, and go back to the original schema. Because let's take a narcissist. 
If you have yeah. a narcissist, they always appear pushy, dominant, self-aggrandizing, being the tough one. Mm -hmm. And usually, remember the mustache person, <laughs> this impacts the present moment interaction. And then people will either surrender, that's the intention, but they might distance or fight back. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the dominant narcissist usually with a lot of people runs into problems. And as a therapist, you will run into a problem as well. But if yeah. you as a therapist do an imagery with a narcissist, and the, the vulnerable child appears behind the dominant presented coping mode today, then you might say, hey, I got your point. You are brilliant. You're a big person. You make a lot of money. But inside, in your heart, you're still the little Adam. Yeah. And I want to care for this little Adam. I completely accept all what Adam did over the course of his life. But deep inside, there is still a lonely Adam who wants to be loved and not mm -hmm. admired or adored or respected. You want to be loved. But we can't love a big person. We can adore it, but we love the vulnerable child inside. And this is what we see in the still face video, which we always use as the theoretical framework yeah. to show people how a person, a one-year-old girl, primarily react emotionally. And in the video, we all, as an observer, feel compassion for this mm -hmm. little girl when the mother detaches. And this, uh, this compassion organ <laughs> that we have in our brains, because it's a biological thing, Adam, yeah. it's not about love, it's about survival. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nature built this caretaking system into our brain to build groups because the group can survive against mammoths and tigers and <laughs> elephants and lions, whatever. The group is stronger than the individual, and this is why we survived. So you yeah. can count on this compassion system with your clients and mm -hmm. couples therapy. It's so helpful <laughs> if they, the, the fighting couple in imagery suddenly experiences the partner's helpful, caring, loving. So yeah. this is much better than 10 sessions where you talk about stuff. Do an imagery session and push the button of the caretaking system and the people will soften up and you will have a good connection with them. And you create a set point in your therapy that it's better to, to show vulnerability today instead of playing the tough one and fight against the other people. In couples, yeah. with narcissists, with antisocial people to some extent. You can also, if not all antisocial people are, can access their vulnerable side, but if you get to that point, the therapy is a different thing. And they mm -hmm. will suddenly cooperate with you. And whenever they start showing up again, being the tough guy, you, you label it, you validate it, and put it at the right place and say, Adam, I know you're a successful person. <laughs> but this is front stage. This is what you made out of it. Put it aside. Let's look deeper. Close your eyes. Connect with your body. Feel what happens in your chest. Is your chest wide? Is your chest tight? Is breathing easy or hard? Is the feeling in your belly energetic or is it a floor? And then, okay, the floor feelings, the tight chest. This is your vulnerable side, Adam. Let's go there. Yeah. Connect with that. What do you need now when you feel vulnerable and flaw and powerless? Yeah, you need somebody who supports you. Right. Right now, that's me. I'm with you. You're not alone. You're no longer alone. So We're here, here together. Compassion side. This is yeah. Compassion focused therapy. Yeah. Yeah. So, to yeah. some extent, we role model the compassionate parent this is what we call it reparenting reparenting yeah. care limited. for this yeah. side mm -hmm. but it must be limited exactly yeah. because in the first step you give the client an experience of being seen valued emotionally accompanied to help him to accept this part to overcome his coping to yeah. stay with it and this is acceptance yeah and the next step is okay stand up both adult modes the client and the therapist and you look down on the chair and said, hey, what do you feel if you look at this boy down there? Yeah, so it's, the so client it's, needs the self-compassion feelings. Yeah, and it's, That's the yeah, and it's a symbolic, like for me, when I observe, I, I was a participant of your great, great workshop <laughs> here in the <laughs> context you. to a schema therapy. And I remember the moment when you stand up with, uh, with, uh, one of the participants mm -hmm. that were play and a narcissistic she played very well a narcissistic yeah maybe she was one <laughs> maybe, i don't know <laughs> maybe too good <laughs> yeah, yeah but that's okay 
Yeah, but 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 it is also like to look uh, on the our con conceptualized self, yeah, and like um, the is the the process of the observing self when we can observe our modes how they uh, interact together, yeah. and then we can choose the uh, the the like a, a different action that that we used to do when we are not aware of it. So exactly. Yeah, that's the point, Adam. Because we all, based on schemas and automatic schema coping, yeah. we have an automatic pilot who, from inside our brain, tells us what we should do. In quotations, yeah. and the problem is, if you go with it, you you are trapped in your past, not only in terms of a conceptual self, but also in behavior patterns. It's an automatic pilot. It's like with when you drive in your car, and they change the direction of a street. And your automatic pilot tells you go right, and if you follow your pilot, you will run into this dead end, uh, this this one way street, and you will have a problem yeah. in terms of an accident. So sometimes an automatic pilot might be helpful because it's not always bad, mm -hmm. but you need a few, maybe ten percent of your brain should be spared out to observe what is going on right now, and this is the yeah. mindfulness part, the present moment activation yeah. because you need the option to stop your automatic pilot when you run into problems mm -hmm. and so we can use the automatic pilot but the problem appears when you can't turn it off and this is what the adult mode needs to be trained in that you yeah. get aware what is going on here mode awareness yeah okay then you need to balance or reappraise and balance is that the right thing to do right now following my values is this what i really want what i really need and then you have a choice and that's the yeah. point. It's not about right or wrong. And you don't have to delete anything. Your automatic yeah. pilot is in your brain. It will be there until you also, die. We cannot delete it. No, and no, no. Clients want us to delete yeah. their, their, their storage device and, and clean it and rebuild them and reboot them. But that's not working. Yeah. We have to train making choices quickly and effectively. But yeah. this is what we can do. We can train our brain into a new direction. We can build new networks. And over the course of time and by practicing, they get stronger and they might overshade the old patterns. And then mm -hmm. we appear as a more functional and somehow different person. And yeah. That's what we can train. But clients need to accept borderline clients, trauma clients, and also the narcissists. They have their patterns. Their emotions will pop up, but they yeah. don't have to follow it. And this is acceptance and commitment therapy. Yeah. You know, emotions are just emotions. You don't have to buy into them. They will pass, whatever it is. Thought is a suggestion of your brain. You don't have to think it. And this is applied Buddhism in our Western cultures. Culture, yeah. And it's so helpful because you know, many therapies are still driven by the idea to change things, to make things better, to overcome problems, to get rid of them. Yeah. And this is actually not really working. Like our culture that we need to be better all the time. Yes. Yeah. Do uh, like uh, the status of, of the of, so. of our uh, money. Yeah. Like, and our to. Whole. Yeah. Our whole economy is built on yeah. growth, and this is Western style. This is not working. On if you think hundred or two hundred years ahead, we will constantly run into more. Not only the climate change, we have a problem yeah. with resources, but this this idea to grow is yeah. is critical. And Buddhism is one philosophy replacing religions to some extent mm -hmm. that offer us a, a, a different framework, a polar framework that might help us to balance in terms of, hey, you don't have to change the world outside. You can change your expectations. And mm -hmm. on both ways, both ways yeah, are beautiful. somehow able to create a, a kind of a satisfaction or confidence, not mm -hmm. naturally happiness, but confidence. And we are too much prone to change things, to make the world the way we think it has to be. And the mm -hmm. Buddhists help us to say, hey, don't change the world. Change your mind. Let your expectations go. And then it's okay. Whatever happens is okay. Okay, yeah. this is a bit <laughs> theoretical and a bit extreme. Yeah. But it's about balancing these both poles. And this is why I... I'm so convinced that acceptance and commitment therapy, all the third wave therapies, the Buddhistic yeah. influence is really important to balance 
this polarity between change and acceptance. And, DBT, yeah, dialectic yeah. behavior therapy, also does it. It's part of the team. Yeah. And compassion and, focused therapy. We all together as yeah. third wave therapies. Yeah. It's a family. Yeah. And uh, I uh, find out that, uh, like in uh, Germany, uh, schema therapy is official a third wave. Like, yeah. And um, what was the, the moment that you, like maybe discover act or uh, or uh, you find out uh, a need to uh, actualize a schema therapy what was like the history of of the contextual schema if you remember like <laughs> that's that's a good question i actually can't tell you precisely but i remember i attended an, uh, the the acbs meet i think it's acbs the 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 the, the acceptance and commitment therapy meetings in berlin I don't know what it was, maybe 2012, 2014, I don't know. And I was very impressed about the people. Mm -hmm. And they were relaxed, they were chilled, they were cool. <laughs> and of course, I also got somehow interested in the ideas. So this added something, there is a therapy mm -hmm. about these ideas. And I personally have a longer history with anthroposophy. You might, know, might not know that, that's a... Um, semi-religious mm -hmm. belief system in okay. popular in Germany. Meanwhile, it's, it's, it's fading out, but 20 years ago, it was very popular. And this integrates Christian belief, Buddhistic beliefs. So I was mm -hmm. open for a kind of Buddhistic thinking for 20 years. Yeah. Then I learned meditation. So on a private uh, path, I, I, I got in touch with Buddhistic ideas with meditation 15, 20 years ago. So there was something inside of me, but then I, I, I experienced the this ACT community and the ACT ideas. So yeah. this was a match. Again, once more, it was a match between something inside of me and, and something coming from the outside. And then I thought, okay, you can't just do this change-oriented schema therapy. Because schema therapy, in the way Jeffrey mm -hmm. Young yeah. developed it, or Arnold Arndt's puts it out in his studies yeah. in the book where, um, uh, with Gita Jakob. This is not third wave. This is second wave. The conventional schema therapy model is second wave. It's about change. It's about making things better. It's yeah, about the content thoughts. of thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Content, fighting, yeah. fighting, yeah. fighting the fighting. critic mode yeah. is sch conventional schema therapy. This, yeah. this is second wave. Yeah. This thinking is wrong. And then it's because um, the fact that schema therapy is regarded as a third wave therapy in Germany is is resulting from my work and also Ulrich Vorderholzer. Um, no, 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 Ulrich Schweiger in, in, in Lübeck. He's also supporting this third wave idea very much. But this is not schema therapy in general. It's the, the contextual idea to, to mm -hmm. add these third wave ideas. Schema therapy is more emotion focused, which is not third wave. Many people yeah. think third wave is emotion focused work. That's not the point. The mm -hmm. essence of third wave is the Buddhistic disidentification idea, metacognitive therapy. It's not so about emotions. It's actually more pro processes, yeah, like yeah. to um, that you can be observer of your internal experiences. Exactly. And That's the spirit of third wave therapies. Mm -hmm. And what schema therapy actually does, it adds the deep emotional work <clears throat> taken from Gestalt therapy. Yeah to this third wave spectrum, because many of the third wave therapies are kind, not intellectual, but they are more like rising above the problems. Let these problems go. Mm -hmm. And they are not biographically based yeah. because this is too close to fused thinking, but it's not a thinking, it's an experience. experience inside. Yeah. It's not thinking, it's your past. It's inside your body. You can't ignore it. You can't overcome your body, you know? And this is why I think that schema therapy adds a lot in terms of rising into a metacognitive perspective, observe yourself, disidentify from all your emotions, from your thoughts. This is the act movement. But it also offers a layer of deep emotional work. Yeah, dive into it. Because if you're not connected with it, you can't accept it. You need to feel it, put it at the right place in terms of biography. So it's, it's from your past, and yeah. this is adding something to the table. So it's also uh, about the balancing, uh, about the acceptation and the changing. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. it's pretty complex where you yeah. you are not only 
focusing that you must uh, change your way of um, behavior. Um, probably it's also important, but there is a other part about the acceptation that. Yeah, <clears throat> right. You know, you, you don't know. Some people are more flexible. They have yeah. more resources. They are more extroverted people. They are more willing to take a risk. Ex experience something, explore something. And they, of course, have go a good basement for new experiences and they will be probably able to change more in terms of adding new networks to, your, to their brain, brain, new attractors. And this makes progress or change easier. Yeah. But you have a lot of people who are more internalizing, they are more, have a higher neuroticism score, they are more skeptical, they are more inhibited people, more this cluster C-like people from the old DSM-4, not the yeah. B cluster, the C cluster. And they are more hesitant, they are not this experiential. And to some extent, they are more bothered by their critic modes. Mm -hmm. So if you help them to identify neutralize and try to distance from the critic modes, they might not change very much in terms mm -hmm. of behavior, but they will feel relief yeah. from the critic mode voices and then they feel better. And maybe over the course of time, they might become more willing to try something, to, to do an experiment. But these people, if you deal with critic modes, it's not about changing the critic modes. You don't have to fight them. It won't work anyway. Yeah. They'll come back because they're in your brain. <laughs> you can't <laughs> cut out of your brain. You know, it's not working. Yeah, Low, yeah. Lobotomy is not working. <laughs> so you have to accept them, but you don't have to go with them. And so acceptance is a much better approach dealing with critic mode voices. To, like the act people say, turning the, the radio lower. Let yeah. the thought fade away like a bus uh, walk, uh, driving down the street. Yeah. Let the clouds pass on the sky. And this is much easier to achieve than to change anything. Yeah. So it's, it's about you have to find out in your therapy how much change are people able to achieve. And you'll do that, of course. <laughs> we don't say, hey, do nothing. It's about get, achieving what you can achieve, but always have with another eye. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you, can, you say, okay, maybe this is getting too difficult. Maybe it's better to accept that you're this kind of person and don't feel bad about it. Get your critic mouths away and say to people, hey, I know I'm a bit, I'm a bit anxious person. I'm, I'm, I'm not the, the, that experiential. I'm not that open. Please accept that. But maybe you do it and I will go with you. you know, something, something like that. And this, is, this, this creates a more peaceful or a mm -hmm. more um, a more functional cooperation in groups or in couples mm -hmm. because if you accept them where you are i'm sorry because something is yeah, 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 yeah. here fine. for one second sorry. you can stop oh it's finished yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you accepted it and now it's over you, you yeah. didn't have to put it out it goes out by itself you know? yeah <laughs> <clears throat> so this is what we try to teach people it's basically easier to let your expectations go with couples it's extreme yeah. Many couples start their relationships with the hidden agenda, I'm going to shape that person according to my expectations. <laughs> it's not working. So once you let that go mm -hmm. and balance distance and closeness, you get a much more flexibility in the couple and they, they get along and they don't have to separate. Because if you distance a little bit more, it's like a micro separation, you know, you, you give more space to each other. And Usually, if you distance more, the, the attractive parts of your partners become even more attractive, and then you're mm -hmm. willing to, to, to connect a bit more. And when it gets too difficult, you, you distance again, like the hedgehogs, you know? When they yeah. want to hug each other, it's getting itchy. <laughs> yeah. And when they get away from each other, it's getting cold. So you need a good balance between itching and feeling cold. Course, well, this is yeah. what you can do with couples. And this, mm -hmm. is, this is why we have low separation rates. If mm -hmm. couples work, they don't, they, they don't all end up in paradise, you know? Yeah, but, life isn't a paradise, so like... Yeah, but we, we go get, for it. <laughs> we, you, you know, all the advertisements tell you, if you look at, at, at the TV channels, life is paradise. If you don't get there, you're wrong. <laughs> you know, yeah. we have to buy our food, our, our products. Yeah. But actually, the problem is uh, people think in, in dichotomic black and white patterns, either I have a good relationship or I have to separate. But the problem is with the next relationship, 
If you don't change your schemas, your behavior style, you will probably run into the same problems. Yeah. So it will not be better, it will just be different. And this is no, no big gain and you pay a price for a separation, you usually pay quite a high price. So it's much more effective to op mm -hmm. offer this third option in terms of yeah. balancing, you made that point, and say, okay, what, what, what works well in sharing, so share it. And if you run into, if you're on different agendas, okay, go on parallel tracks, that's no problem. A couple doesn't need to do everything together. You can be on separate tracks and whenever it fits, that's okay. And if it's a misfit or mismatch, you can do it on parallel tracks, that's okay. And this is the gain of couples work, not to change people, but help them to accept the shortcomings of the partners, but enjoy the pros and the overlap. Yeah. And it's be compassionate not, no to each yeah. other. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But the compassion, the, 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 the anger about the mismatch over shades or, or poisons your empathy and your, your, your compassion. And this is really stupid. Yeah? Instead of enjoying the overlap and share the communalities, yeah. you fight against the mismatch. And then the, the, the fighting, the sympathetic activation, your anger activation, mm -hmm. poisons your, your, your compassionate side. This yeah. is not helpful. This yeah. is not wise. <laughs> <laughs> so um, is it a challenging work, uh, working with couples? Yeah, because on my workshop, I remember it was with Arthur Fre Freeman. Mm -hmm. He told us that uh, he did a, a workshop about the couples uh, therapy. And on the beginning, he said that, uh, remember, don't do couples therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is it a, a, a challenging uh, part of, of uh, like a clinical work, working with couples or what's the, like, how do you feel? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Many people actually think that working with couples is very difficult. But and in the beginning, I felt the same. But what we did is that we, like like Jeffrey Young did it with schema therapy in general, we try to analyze what is the basic model of our interaction. This is the mode cycle. And then we developed a very practical hands-on module system. This is this is on the website. If you go to the mm -hmm. English website, okay. there are the modules. And the, the point is, if you reduce the complexity of the couple interaction to what mm -hmm. they show you in the therapy room, mm -hmm. because we think the pattern they show in the therapy room is driven by schemas. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same schemas and the same pattern what, you, what they show in therapy as what they do outside. So we don't listen to all the stories. We, this is the, the conceptual self, these are the <laughs> narratives. We go yeah. to the interaction and say, and just take the role, the coping mode and the emotions behind it. So it, we simplified the model extremely, and this is in the videos. If you go to the tutorials on the website, okay. you get all the explanation with the still face video and the smartphone metaphor. We simplified the model almost painfully, <laughs> but this helps us that in the first session, mm -hmm. the latest in the second session, you, you, you convey this model to the couple, and then you have a, a, a joint agenda. You have a, a conceptualization, which is, you can apply mm -hmm. to every interaction in the room in the and room. you can show it's more on the dominant we mm -hmm. call it the, the red leg the dominant side yeah the, the anti-social pole i push my agenda through or is it more on the cooperative side what we call blue, blue leg which yeah. is more to submission so mm -hmm. is it more on the dominant side or the most more the submissive side so with this simple two-leg or polar model Mm -hmm. You have a grid, a framework where you, where you can put every interaction on. And then you just simply tell the couple, if you're both going to your dominant, self-centered, self-assertive red side, you will run into problems, then we'll have a fight. So yeah. to overcome that fight, you just have to stop it, rebalance, get your mind, get your mind up, make your mind up. Where do you want to go with this relationship? What are your values? What is the purpose of your relationship? Is it fighting? Probably not. Or go back to your past, to your better times, to your honeymoon. What's, what connected you in the past to connect them with the pro side of the other person? And then on your, on your more cooperative 
mm -hmm. um, other directed pro-social side, you try to, to reconnect with the other person. So it's about balancing these two legs yeah. and then mm -hmm. help the clients to, and this is actually a historical up to that point. It's just about the interaction in the present moment. Mm -hmm. But to, to stop the maladaptive moves, get back, balance, and then we do the imagery that I already mentioned, the conjoint imagery. And then mm -hmm. starting from the clash, we do the float back to the childhood of one partner. Let's say we, we use Tom and Betty. So yeah, be a, a homosexual couple as well. That's no difference. Mm -hmm. And when Betty floats back and you find out that Betty is always fighting against her dominant uh, uh, father, mm -hmm. then you might realize why she's so angry at Tom and always pushes him and always fights back. But in the, in the child, she will over, or she will, um, in, um, reveal the vulnerable Betty behind the fighting Betty today. And then Tom will be able to feel compassion for mm -hmm. this vulnerable Betty. And in the imagery, in the session, they yeah. will connect, they will hug, they will, they will say nice words to each other. Hey, I don't want to hurt you. I, I, I love you. I, when I see that part of you, this is, this is the Betty I love. Then mm -hmm. you create a set point of feeling connected in your session. And it heals schemas too. Yeah, yeah, to some extent. Well, yeah. well, <laughs> actually, you show them how to yeah. deal with it, and then we record the sessions so they can mm -hmm. take the sessions mm -hmm. back home and listen to it, and then you have a, like like an archive of good moments. And whenever they run into trouble at home, they can listen to these to these resource oriented mm -hmm. uh, experiences in the sessions. And this is how we try to transfer the, the experience from the sessions to the everyday life. And in the other way, if, if Tom, Tom mm -hmm. always have been neglected and pushed away by, by somebody and he, he detaches and he says, yeah, I'm, I'm not seen anyway, so I can back off and go to my office and play computer. Well, when he floats back and you, you find this lonely Tom, mm -hmm. Maddie will say, hey, I don't want to push you away. I, I, I need you. Yeah. And then you might empower Tom, which is the other side. There are some more anxious people. I mentioned them, these cluster C-like people. And they need empowerment. Mm -hmm. And then we do an imagery where we close eyes and they, they stand up and say, okay, picture being a powerful person. Maybe you use an image from a video or a movie or a novel. <clears throat> Be this powerful person rooted in the ground, your strong legs, your full of power. Mm -hmm. How do you want Betty? And, and, and next week, overnight, a miracle happens. And next week, Betty is the Betty you love. Betty is the way you want her to be. How does that look like? So we also use imagery into, to find solutions, to, to create mm -hmm. ideas where people want to go. And finally, this is kind of value-based, but it's implicit. Yeah. It's in, in the images. It's not, it's not our, we don't talk about the values. In the images, we, we activate them implicitly, and then, then you get an, an idea how they want to be in their life, how they want their life to be. And then they, we train them to express mm -hmm. these needs to Betty balanced with an offer of connection. Yeah. And if Betty likes that, she'll say, okay, this Tom is okay for me. And then you ask, how do you feel now? Can you picture getting closer? All with eyes closed in imagery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you take them by the hands, you connect them, and then they hug in the sessions because you revealed the good part of them. Okay. And you yeah. put the bad part aside, and then they can connect. Which so happens they, during the session, too. In the session, yes, yeah. of course, in yeah, the session. Right. And this is, if you follow these modules, you have a clear guideline to stop the maladaptive interactions. We don't go there. We don't talk about the problems. We address it, we label it, and put it aside. And then we create connection in the sessions. And the final part is that we teach them how to talk respectfully. Mm -hmm stay on their side of the fence and then make their point and listen to the point of the other by repeating. This is an important part. Mm -hmm. And then the therapy ends. This is the module 11, 12 of the homework assignments. So, and there are 12 modules. So this is, a, it's, a, it's, it's a box, a toolbox. And Protocol. You can, yeah, like then, no, not exactly. Yeah, you exactly. Don't, it's not a manual. You don't uh -huh. have to go through the steps one by one. Mm -hmm. Usually there's a certain movement from one to 12, but there is a flexibility. So you yeah. can adapt the process. You have like, like tools and you can mm -hmm. decide, okay, now imagery might be good to connect them more emotionally. No, now I need to teach them how to talk mm -hmm. to the other person. They are much too dominant when they talk especially the dominant people. They don't realize yeah. how dominant, how angry, how pushy they appear. And yeah. Then you can stand behind their chairs. You can change the 
perspective, you can all move behind Tom's chair and ask Betty, okay, look at that Betty over there. Can you picture how she talks? Can you hear her voice tone, her wording, her body language, her the the messages, the content of the messages? And if you're now on Tom's shoes, on his side, on his chair, behind his chair, how mm -hmm. does it make you feel? Or you can ask him to sit down on Tom's chair. Now, Betty is sitting on Tom's chair, closing the eyes. Betty, go to your body. How do you feel inside your chest when you listen? And yet, then you repeat it, standing yeah. beside her. Hey, Tom, you're a useless person. You'll never do what I tell you. You're, you're a pain in the ass, and I better be without you. How does it make you feel inside your body now, listening to these voices? And then she yeah. feels constrained, suppressed, hot yeah. to breathe. Say, okay, Betty, okay, what do you need now? Yeah, somebody who talks a little bit nicer to me, who gives me a little bit more space. Say, okay. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what Tom needs. Tom, is that right? Yeah, that's right. This is exactly what I need. <laughs> More blue. You stand up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then you stand up and say, okay, Betty, there to the right, there is the Betty who is the pushy one. But mm -hmm. you now, as an observer, you felt what Tom felt. So now try to balance it from your adult side. Yeah. Turn it into a more cooperative language. And then you train it. So sometimes it's about training. Sometimes it's about experiencing. Sometimes yeah. it's about just stopping the cycles. Sometimes it's about building up resources. Spending five minutes a day listening to the story of the other person. Kids are to bed. <laughs> it's 8, 8.30 in the evening. You just sit maybe with a glass of wine or a glass of water. <laughs> and then you have a quality time moment, five minutes. Hey, how was your day, Betty? This yeah. is okay. If you have five minutes a day, it makes a difference. So this is something practical, part of the homework mm -hmm. toolbox. So there are some components and they mm -hmm. all contribute to stopping the maladaptive interaction, getting more into observer mode, balancing, where do you want to go, create emotional connection with imagery yeah. and teach them how to talk more functionally. That's these right. are the four big steps. It's no miracle. And it gives you handrails. It guides you along mm -hmm. this uh, jungle of stories they offer you. But don't yeah. go there. Don't go to the stories. This is, this is the basic message. Don't listen to their stories. Analyze the pattern. Analyze the cycle. Stop the cycles. That's the secret. Right. And it's pretty effective. We're just doing a study in the Netherlands about that approach, combining individual and couples work. Mm -hmm. And it, it looks pretty good. So it's, it's, it's working. Great. Um, and you have some studies also about the contextual schema therapy like in oh yeah no no, yeah. no because you know the studies the, the most of the studies yeah. are done by arnold arns or in connection with his team in mm -hmm. the netherlands and he's working with his conventional model or oh, they they do group group yeah. work also and there there are no studies there are some studies going on, on right now, now yeah. some are finished and just in publication yeah. but more smaller studies using our model and the effects are very very good a colleague yeah. of mine did one in weinsberg with a multiple baseline study it's mm -hmm. just in the, in the process of preparing the the publication but until now most of the publications are on the conventional model or the group model but there will be coming some some uh, Sun, studies yeah. with the but you know it takes such such a long time yeah i i i know that it takes and, time uh, but the psychological flexibility shows that it's uh, like important in every areas of yeah. our life and it exactly. can help strength the, the healthy adult mode. Absolutely. And, like, so there are hundreds of ACT studies. Yeah. And they yeah, show, exactly. but more with access one symptoms, not with personality disorders. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so schema therapy is, is effective with, with access two personality disorders yeah. and ACT is effective with access one disorders. So if you combine them, it might be helpful, <laughs> helpful to, yeah. to be active, um, helpful with, with access to disorders as well. So we are optimistic, but yeah. you know, we, we published the, the contextual approach in 2018. This is not yeah, that long so ago. It's, early, yeah. like, it's pretty young, young yeah. <clears throat> yeah. but the background is not young. So there's a lot of yeah. work about DBT, about acceptance commitment therapy. <laughs> and to so, integrate also the uh, motiva uh, mo motivational interviewing yeah. into the schema therapy. So it's exactly. also great. Yeah, because the, the movement, what they do, Mill and Rolnick, what they do with their frames approach in terms of balancing between offering something, 
giving and feedback and active feedback from the therapist side and then stepping back and say okay but it's it's a, you're responsible you have to yeah. make the choices and this is this balancing is exactly what we do in terms of getting a more active therapist position and then give way to the client to make their decisions yeah and this and, balancing is good and it strength also the therapeutic relationship yeah, yeah. that that you are response for or your own um choices and and mm -hmm. it's okay for me yeah, yeah. like uh, i you're okay for me when you do this or that yeah, yeah exactly but this is the acceptance part you know yeah, too if yeah. the therapist is too driven and things things have <laughs> to go the way he believes he run it runs into problem no don't argue with the client roll with resistance this is part of miller's work and he's right this is about acceptance so I think they all have a certain Buddhistic background. All these mm. therapists have a certain Buddhistic background. <laughs> and this is helpful. So many of the new therapeutic approaches um, are somehow tainted with these Buddhistic ideas. And we try to integrate all that and contribute yeah. to the process-based pr um, approach right yeah. now in terms of adding emotional work to the more cognitive work uh, of acceptance of commitment therapy add a, a, an, an effective way of working with the biography, not wading through it, but understand it, accept it and put it at the right place and yeah. then be free to do something different. So this matches without any uh, contradictions with the ideas of acceptance and commitment therapy, mm -hmm. if, you, if you put it that way. So this is our contribution <clears throat> to merge these more emotion a focused biographical work with a more goal-directed, solution-directed work of the acceptance and commitment therapy and compassion-focused therapy and somehow DBT parts. Yeah. And this integrates into a very consistent, homogenic approach, which we think is actually the future. Process-based therapy is a good idea, so we try to contribute a little bit in terms of relationship, how to manage the relationship, how yeah. to do imagery work, how to connect with the past and, and get beyond it in terms of more life quality and where do you yeah, want to go? How to reinforce healthy behaviors like yeah. exactly. self-care and so on. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for uh, such a great interview <laughs> about, uh, like, uh, about the history, about the most important things uh, in uh, contextual schema therapy about the couples therapy. Thank you. Thank you You're very welcome. much. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed <laughs> talking to you, Adam. Thank you very much. So, and I wish your podcast a lot of success, a lot of followers or listeners, because this is a great job you're doing there to bring all this good news and fresh information to the people. That's yeah, yeah, I, 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 I try to do my best, you know, and Oh, it looks and pretty it, good. <laughs> thank you. And it's like, uh, makes me feel good about it. Yeah. yeah. So all the best for you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. And to you too, all the best. Yeah. And I h hope maybe one day you agree again to speak maybe about some more things. Yeah, of course. Thank this you. Is a, this is a good, a good project. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.